Hello, welcome to All Things Educational, the video show, where the pages of All Things Educational, the magazine, come to life. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop. Today we're going to have a very special guest with us. Before I get to him, let me ask you a question. Did you realize that the United States has the highest incarceration rate in the entire world, followed by Russia and Canada coming up third? That's right, we lock up over 47% of our male population. Today we have a very special guest who spent the majority of his adult life incarcerated. Started when he was a teenager, ended nearly 22 years later, but he's here with us today to talk about some of the things that actually led to his incarceration and we're going to be talking about solutions. So log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com for more information about today's show and any other show. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Mateen Diop with something to think about. We appreciate your input and support. If you would like to be featured or have a show idea, log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. Send us an email. Our email address is info at allthingseducational.com. Once again, this is Dr. Mateen Diop. Welcome back to All Things Educational, the video show. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop. We're here today talking to Mr. Burnell Gardner. Mr. Berg, uh, Gardner was recently released after several years of incarceration. As a matter of fact, he spent most of his adult life incarcerated. And we're talking to him a little bit today about some of the things that led to his incarceration. We're going to be talking a little, a little bit about solutions. So let's get right to the questions. I want, Mr. Gardner, I want you, first of all, thanks for coming today. Appreciate you being here. And Can you talk a little bit about as a teen, when you were a teenager, what are, what are some of the choices and what's, what are some of the things that led you to start making the decisions that eventually led to your incarceration? Well, one of them, sir, uh, not having an education, getting not kicked out of school at an early age. I was around 14, 15 years old, fighting. I went to a Hispanic uh, junior high school, and I had several fights with the Hispanic guys, and uh, that led me to getting kicked out of school. I broke a bus window at the time, and my mom, being a single parent, didn't have no money to pay for the bus, so I had to do the next thing and started working at an early age. So you started working at an early age, and you make and you're making these decisions. Can you tell me what are some of your 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 fondest memories or your most recent memories when you were in school before you started getting into trouble? Did you have any good memories about school? Oh uh, yes, I played sports such as basketball. I loved to run track. Mm -hmm. I mean, just an all-around guy, but. After that, it just, like a blink of an eye, all that went down the drain. Mm -hmm. So when you say a blink of an eye, when, you, when you, you're when you throwing rocks at the school bus and you know, you're know you doing all these, these sorts of things, your very first time being incarcerated, what was that like? Well, I mean, it, it, was a, it took a big old toll on me once I realized that I was gonna be away from my parents, my brother, sister, grandparents, and people such as that. But not being educated at that time, I was like, golly, you know. Uh, I thought it was being tough being incarcerated, but it wasn't being tough. But once I started learning over the years, I'm like, I'm spending a lot of years away from my family. And uh, I was finding solution, things that I can do to make it up out the prison system. And uh, just try to walk a straight line to not get myself involved in a lot of things in prison, such as gangs or stealing and things such as that. So was there ever a time during your teens, was there ever a time when you said, hey, I can't do this, I need to change my life around before you got incarcerated? Was there ever a time when you when you said, I can't live like this? When, or, or did you always have that sense of in invincibility, if you would? I didn't, I didn't want to live like that, but I didn't have no other choice. The streets was wide open for me at that time. I didn't have no education. I was kicked out of school, couldn't turn back to school. I wanted to go back to school, but at the time uh, I was trying to get in Healy Murphy, they was accepting young men and young women that was pregnant or young men that got kicked out of school and things such as that. But they put me on a waiting list at that time. And before you know it, I was already in the street doing wrong. 
So when you're when you're in school, I guess I'm I'm going with the with the whole education piece because I want I want everybody to understand the importance of education. So yes, when you were 13, 14 years old, you had you finished the eighth grade or you didn't finish the eighth grade? No, sir. I, I, I never got up out the eighth grade. Never got out the eighth grade. grade. So yes, you never went to high school. No, sir. So the summer between your eighth and ninth grade year, what was that? Talk about talk a little bit about that if you could. Well, I was out in the streets by that time. Uh, selling the little pills here and there. Uh, just running wild, waiting for my friends to get out of school. The guys that was going to high school at the time, wait for them to get out of school. I'm waiting on the corner. I'm hiding out from the truant officers and things such as that and just looking for some type of work. I had a friend at the time. He used to do a lot of handiwork in the community and I used to help him out to make a little change at the time. So, the, the, the change that you were making, I mean, you're not in school. Do you have brothers and sisters? Do you have siblings? I never talked to you about that. Do you yes, have? Yes, uh, sir. I come from a family of nine. Okay. I'm the third oldest. Now, your younger brothers, you have younger brothers. Do you talk to them now? Did you talk to them back then? I guess what I'm asking is, what part did they play? Did they try to steer you in a different direction? Your whole The whole family life, what part did your well, family play back then? To be honest with you, I'm the third of nine kids. I played a big part in the family because my brother and sister, they was already leaving the house, already left the house at that time. So I had two sisters and a brother up under me at that time. And I took on responsibility helping my mom to help raise them. For as I learned how to comb little girls out by the time I was 11, 12 years old, uh, go shopping at Kmart at the time, buying little clothes and go shopping with food. I was like a, a big brother and a father at the time. But I always steered them in the direction that I wanted to go in. So reading some of your paperwork, I noticed that, and you shared some of this with me, that you were labeled a career criminal by the time you were, I don't know, 18, 19. That's, you labeled, labeled a career criminal by the court system. Yes, sir. How did that feel? I mean, how did that, how did that even come about, a career criminal at such a young age? Well, at the time, right when I turned 18 years old, I had a manslaughter case. And while I was out on bond, they came up with a murder case up against me. So that was two cases within a year, maybe a year and a half apart, I don't know exact, you know. Uh, and I was received a four year sentence on one, a seven year sentence on the other one, and they was ran concurrent. I was sent to TDC with a seven year sentence, which I served three years on for a murder case and a manslaughter, two separate offenses. Mm -hmm. After being released from TDC in 1992, I stayed out of prison seven months out of the uh, Texas Department of Correction. After seven months, I was back caught up in the system. And I was uh, looking at 262 months, which is 21 years and 10 months in the federal system for possession of cocaine. We're gonna come right back with more with Mr. Gardner. Right after these messages, don't go anywhere. We're going to give you something to think about. All things educational disease. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Mateen Diop with something to think about. We appreciate your input and support. If you would like to be featured or have a show idea, log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. Send us an email. Our email address is info at allthingseducational.com. Once again, this is Dr. Mateen Diop. Welcome back to All Things Educational, the video show. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop. If I didn't tell you, make sure you go to my website, www.allthingseducational.com, where you can find more information about today's show. You can pick up your copy of All Things Educational, the magazine, and you can also pick up my book, Inner City Public Schools Still Work. Today on the video show, we're talking to Mr. Burnell Gardner. Mr. Gardner has spent the majority of his adult life in incarcerated in one form or another. And we, today we're talking a little bit about the events that led to his incarceration. And we're going to be talking about some of the solutions to what he can do now that he's out and trying to be a functioning member of society. So, Mr. Gardner, let me, let me read something to you. So I, got the, I, I read this statistic the other day, and it said the likelihood of black males going to prison in their lifetime is 16%. Once released, 7 out of 10 go back. 
you said something on the other uh, on the other clip about when you were served time for three or four years when you got out within seven months you went right back so you were actually part of this statistic so my question is can you take us into your mind when you were released when you were released that first time and you were out did you did what led for you what led you to go back is it something that just, it was societal is just I, I'm still feeling invincible what led to you led, what led you going back into the you know, prison being released out uh, Texas Department of Correction I didn't have no education I did not receive my education and uh, coming out without an education or without a plan it led me back in to the streets. I didn't have no type of funds, but what I was released with, maybe three or four hundred dollars. At that time, they was giving you two hundred dollars. It didn't make no difference if you did twenty years. TDC would give you two hundred dollars. So I had that and maybe another hundred, twenty, thirty dollars. I'm not absolutely sure, but and without an education, so I just ran back in the streets and bumped my head. I got out and started selling drugs maybe a month after I was in after I was released I'm not sure if you if you're familiar with the statistics today talking about uh, the black male graduation rate and the black males uh, on standardized testing and all those types of things I want to ask you now if you could talk to the 14 year old Brunel Gardner standing in front of you and here you are the grown man Brunel Gardner or any young man who you see doing some of the things that you used to do what would you tell him? If I start with, you know, checking on their background, if it's one, he's just 14 years old and he's out of school, I share with him the importance on receiving an education, how important education is, because it can help him down the line in life about helping him get a job. If it's one, a young man that's in a gang, I'll share with him, he knows the way how to get in the gang, let's start to find the solutions to get out the gang and uh, start a focus and, and being around positive people. And if it's one that's out there selling drugs, I'll share with him his 365 days in a year that he have to be successful in selling drugs and the police only have one time to be lucky and catch him. Things such as that, and if it's one using drugs, tell him the effect that drugs will have on his body. You've been incarcerated 20, 20 some odd years. The world has changed a lot since you were released. Now you're re-entering society. How do you become, how do you not become a part of the statistic again now that you're out and you're gonna re-enter society? You have re-entered society. How do you go out and what do you tell people now that, hey, I'm, I'm a changed guy and I wanna re-enter society and just have, give a second chance. What do you say to people today? To start thinking differently, but number one, don't think all that negative stuff because you started putting that into play. Start to stand around positive people. Change your friends. Change your ways of thinking. Well, I can tell you that what I'm hearing you say now, education, education, education. And as an educator, I can tell you that that really is the great equalizer. And I know that when you're out now, you're going to do things differently and you're going to try to, I guess, grow from all of this. But when we come back from the break, I want to start, I want to talk about some solutions. I know we've talked about all the problems, the things that you've done, you've paid your debts to society. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit with Mr. Gardner about solutions and how he cannot go back into the same system that he just left on All Things Educational. The video. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Mateen Diop with something to think about. We appreciate your input and support. If you would like to be featured or have a show idea, log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. Send us an email. Our email address is info at allthingseducational.com. Once again, this is Dr. Mateen Diop. Welcome back to All Things Educational, the video show. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop. I gotta remind you one more time, go to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. You can find information about how to purchase the magazine for this show and purchase my book, Inner City Public Schools Still Work, How One Principal's Life is Living Proof. We're wrapping things up today with Mr. Burnell Gardner. Mr. Gardner, as you've been hearing, has spent the majority of his adult life incarcerated. He's trying to do things differently. So today we're gonna to be talking about finishing up this segment, talking a little little bit about solutions. So let me ask you, you have a family, you have a wife, you have children in college. 
that yes, I don't know if a lot of people realize you have children in college very successful. How are those relationships going? Are you able to mend those? How's that relationship going? Yes, I share with them how important it is to have an education and constantly push them because they see me away from them majority of their life. Uh, I support them. I, I tell them to be open with me. They can talk to me about anything that come across their path. And I'm just there for them. I'm there for my wife. She was there for me. So I think it's only fair that I be there for her. I know one of the stipulations that you must abide by is that you must always be employed. That's anybody. We all, we all must be employed. We all must be working. So we talked about entrepreneurship. And I remember you mentioned that you uh, you were certified to do lawn care. Is is being an entrepreneur something that you, you want to do? Is that something that you even think about, being an entrepreneur, owning your own business? Yes, sir. I like to be entrepreneur on dealing with the youth, mentoring them, sharing with them a lot of things that I have been through in life and being able to just sit down and listen to them because everyone have a different story. It's some the same, but it's different. And that's what the youth needs, somebody to listen to them and take time out with them and steer them in that right direction. Some of them need us to walk with them hand in hand and take them where they need to go. I know some of the education and training you received while incarcerated, you actually finished your GED. So you have your high school diploma. Talk about that. How did that go? How did that feel yes, when you finished well, that? Coming back out the prison system, because some people say, well, you did this, you did that because you was in prison. But I want to show to the world and some of these youth. Before I went into prison, I didn't have my education. But I came back out here and received a diploma. I received a driving license since I've been out, and I also received the job. So I know if I can do it after doing time in prison, I know they should be able to do it before they go to prison. One of, let me read a statistic to you before I ask you this question. It says, characteristics of successful ex-felons include support of their family, employment, and an active spiritual life. Let's go back to your family, if you would. How do you think your sons, you have two sons that are in college soon to graduate. How do you think that importance of education was instilled in them while you were away? I think it played a big part. Their mother going to push them just as hard as I push them. But it, it led them because they didn't want to go down the path that I went down. So uh, we did all we can do at the time to get them in college and I tell them if you don't get your education you're going to be somewhere out in the streets nobody's going to take care of you so you have to take care of yourself but I push them and share with them then that I didn't have an education at the time that led me to doing some uneducated things in life so some of the uneducated things led to, 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 the, to the life that you eventually led, but now you're back out and doing yes, positive things. Let me, let me end with this. And I'm, I'm going to ask you this question, but I'm going to ask you to look into the camera and answer it because you're going to have people who doubt you. You're going to have people who say, nah, he's just talking. He's not going to do it. He's going to go right back into the system. And I just read this, 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 the stat to you. So what do you say to those people who doubt you, who say that, Mr. Gardner, I don't care what you say. You're not going to make it. You're not going to do anything. You're going to go right back. What do you say to those people who doubt you? Well, each day I focus myself on being around positive people, people with their own business. I go around the park and recreations and talk to kids. I go to some of the low-income areas and I speak to the youth or just the people that's down and out. I don't go back where the brothers just dealing the drugs. I stay around positive people and do positive things. Now, what, what is, in your, in your opinion, where do you see our youth, in particular our, our males, where do you see them going today? Do you see, is there hope for them? Because all of the negative stuff that people say, do you see hope for them? What is, what is your opinion of today? Yes, sir, it's hope for them if we get out there and help them. We have to help one another in this day and time in which we're living. We have to talk to our kids, but we also have to listen to them because we don't know what's troubling them to go in the direction that they're going in. They need somebody to listen. They need somebody to reach out to them and go sometime hand to hand. We might have to put more into one child than we have to put in the other. Well, I really want to thank you for coming on All Things Educational today. 
Yes, You've been a, a pleasure to talk to, and I'm, I've actually learned a lot from you today. So if you want to listen to and, and hear replays, of, this is going to be playing all the time on All Things Educational Video Show. We have guests like this. We really want to give you information that's going to help you, and hopefully you'll be able to help somebody else. So again, log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. You can find links to today's show and previous shows. So remember, don't go anywhere, but we're going to be right back. But thank you for watching All Things Educational, the video show. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Mateen Diop with something to think about. We appreciate your input and support. If you would like to be featured or have a show idea, log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. Send us an email. Our email address is info at allthingseducational.com. Once again, this is Dr. Mateen Diop. Welcome back to All Things Educational, the video show. I really want to thank you today for watching the show. I want to thank our special guest, Mr. Gardner, for sharing some very personal uh, experiences that I'm pretty sure he hasn't shared with anybody, especially with this magnitude. And I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching our first initial All Things Educational, the video show, when we had Dr. Alves on. Before I let you go, I want to give you something to think about. Mr. Gardner mentioned education, education, education over again over and over again. He kept saying, I got to the eighth grade, I never got to the ninth grade, which stresses the importance of education. Mom, dad, I'm talking to you, especially you that have male children. Stay in school, get an education. It is the major currency that you have today. Become an entrepreneur. Whatever you're going to do, remember education is the key to everything you want to do. Log on to our website www.allthingseducational.com. You can buy my magazine, All Things Educational Magazine, and you can also pick up a copy of my book, Inner City Public Schools Still Work. And in that book, I talk a lot about what Mr. Gardner talked about today. So again, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time on All Things Educational, the video show. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Mateen Diop with something to think about. We appreciate your input and support. If you would like to be featured or have a show idea, log on to our website at www.allthingseducational.com. Send us an email. Our email address is info at allthingseducational.com. Once again, this is Dr. Mateen Diop.